what's the big thing microscopy has to do? What, how, what, if you were to invent the impossible microscope, and nothing's impossible, just so one day, what would that microscope do? All right. So I keep talking. There's there's two sides of this. There's what is what is needed right now and certainly doable, and then there's the holy grails. Okay. To me, the holy grails, the things that would pop, potentially pull me back into my cross, um, would be to have protein specific contrast, label free, at high resolution, non invasively. Okay. I don't know how to do it. All right. Um, the other option, the other holy grail would be, I don't care whether it's by fluorescence or whatever, um, but to be able to see all the molecular players involved in a biological process at the same time, not just one at a time, yeah. two at a time, three at a time. So the whole endocytic pathway, everything from clathrin, adapter proteins, RAB, you know, the whole thing to see the whole mechanism going on at once. All right. Those are the holy grails. I don't know how to get to those holy grails. Extremely narrow line width labels with orthogonal labeling of 30 things would get you there. Be chemistry, crazy nightmare to get to that. But maybe there are better ways. I don't know. In terms of the what the field needs now. Um, so, yeah, this is going to piss off a lot of people. Um, my feeling is, so one of the reasons I want to get out of microscopy is I feel, I feel that fields of technological development go through cycles just like a farmer's field, okay? There are fertile times after you've, after you've put in the nitrogen fixing plants and you can grow your corn, but after a while you've grown enough corn and it needs sort of a regeneration period. I think the, you know, you look at something like the mosaic, there's nothing technically novel in it at all. It's a lot of engineering, but there's nothing different. Same with the lattice, it was combining two microscopes we already had in it, right? It's necessary to do one like that, but it's not, you know, I feel like lattice, light sheet, and palm, those were step changes, right? In terms of, same thing with near field when I did near field, those were step changes, okay? Um, the rest is just, you know, throwing the ingredients together in different permutations. Um, so uh, microscopy in terms of the hardware development to me is increasingly uninteresting because I think it needs to, you know, again, one of the things that was amazing about starting to work with Harold in 2005, when, you know, we had the idea for Palm, but at that time I didn't even know what a fucking EMCCD camera was um, because I had never seen one. I used to work with an argon ion laser when I was doing near field, it was eight feet long. When I saw that you could get these diode pump solid state lasers that are this big, it's, I felt like Rip Van Winkle and all the filters, all like the Semrock filters and like that, the filters back then sucked in the nineties, okay? So it was like, oh my God, this is gonna be so trivial. There's all this technology. So again, you know, things, things get developed. And the beautiful thing about technology is you never know how it can be combined with all the other pieces of technology that are around to do new things. But right now I feel like every time there's a new tiny little thing, whether it's a new mirror or a new wrinkle, everybody in the field, <laughs> you know? so it's not that interesting. So to me, the frontiers of my microscopy today that are doable. One is I'm very enamored and impressed by what people have been doing with deep learning. Um, and I think there's, it's very, very dangerous. You've got to have a fucking good training set and you have to validate it. And I'm really afraid there's going to be a lot of garbage because people are not going to do the right type of validation of what they're doing. But when applied right, I can really see how that can make a big jump. Basically you're using priors, right? I mean, Palm is kind of using a prior, right? Palm is saying, I prior know that this is a single molecule and not more than one, right? Priors can take you a long way. So I think that's got a lot of wheels to go. The other problem and the hard intractable problem and the thing that depresses me about still lattice light sheet and lattice AO is the data. I mean, everybody knows this, okay? I mean, with the modern, you know, I've got on my computer now, I'm trying to render a 24 terabyte data set, right? So it's with even, I got a $30,000 workstation we have a million dollar cluster that it's hooked to, and it's still 
an enormous pain in the ass to deal with the data. You know, you can easily get 10 terabytes a day, no problem. You can get 20 terabytes a day. And, you know, this kind of brings up, I keep going on these tangents, but it reminded me of, of I, I watched parts of the one you did with, um, with uh, oh God, Jeff, Jeff Lichtman at yeah. Harvard. And so you had a discussion. You just rubbish saying ultra structures, nothing. Well, no, no, no. But but he had a you had an interest. He had an interesting discussion at the end of that about the value of the connectome. I have always been very suspicious about the value of the connectome. It's a very complete set of information. But even if it were not, again, you've got tens of thousands of connections from every neuron, and you've got hundreds of millions of neurons. Even if there were some way of mapping all of that out, can we ever really understand what it means? I really worry, even at the single cell level and at the sort of chemical networks, biochemical networks that exist, and how much I believe that stochastic processes are the base. I think Brownian motion is the real engine of the cell. It's not ATP in the mitochondria. That it's the organization of the cell happens because of Brownian motion and differential sticking coefficients. And it's organizes in the same way that gravity organizes galaxies and, and the universe. Um, and um, the, our ability to understand even a bacterium, I question. And a eukaryotic cell, it's going to be, it's going to be a challenge. So, you know, this is something that science is bumping up against is maybe we can even put it all in a computer and have an AI kind of replicate you know, what's going on. But that doesn't mean we understand it. That doesn't mean it's reducible to principles that we can really put our hands around. Yeah, but the, the data problem itself is just gigantic.